Hi, my name is Jimmy, and today I want to show you a quick how-to on using one of the new features that is available in the Quebec release, and that's called the REST API trigger. I think it's a particularly cool feature because it now allows you to take inbound requests to your ServiceNow instance and fire a, a flow without needing to write any script, right? Before you had to actually create a scripted REST API, write some script to translate your, your variables to your flow variables. Um, or you had to create a table and have a trigger for flow on that table and do something like that it was a little bit unnatural. So now we can actually create a, a, a REST API trigger on the flow to invoke the flow directly from the external system. Let's look, take a look at that. So what I'm gonna use today is I'm gonna use Jira as my third party system that's gonna in, send a request to ServiceNow and uh, fire the flow. Why Jira? I get asked about Jira quite a bit, so I thought maybe it'd be good to use a system that people have um, asked about a lot and would resonate with, with the audience. So to take a look at what Jira sends, I'm looking at this particular page, which is the webhooks page at the, the Atlassian site, and it describes basically the, the body of what the flow is going to look like. Right? So if I come down here, you can see that the um, the body generally has this structure, JSON payload, and we can come down here for a more concrete example of what some of the data might be. So you have the body with an issue. Um, inside the issue, there's the key and some of the fields, right? So let's just kind of show how when Jira posts this to ServiceNow, uh, how we can extract this in our request and have it available in our flow, right? So I've already created a, a workflow. So all we need to do in here is we come in here and we add a trigger. You can see this is our new trigger, right? It's an asynchronous REST API trigger. And the most important thing to keep in mind is you want to make sure that your, um, your description of what you're creating here and your, your trigger matches the request that's going to come in. So I'll show you what I mean by that as we go along. But um, here we see that we've already created a path or the system's created a path for us. We want to make sure that we put the right HTTP method in here. In this case, Jira is going to send us a post. And we're taking inbound Jira. And in this case, we're just going to create one for updating an issue. So when an issue comes in, this is when we want, or when a, an issue is updated in Jira is when we're going to fire this particular um, flow. So you can do authentication, right? I'm going to leave that out just to simplify this a little bit. But if you do require authentication, you just set what role you have here. And then from your external system, when you uh, give it the webhook to the instance. You use the standard HTTP colon slash slash user colon password at, and then the rest of your uh, fully qualified URL to get to your instance. All right, I'm gonna leave that out just to simplify things here. Um, the next thing that you'll notice is we have this content request that comes in, right? This is uh, specifically for a, a post or put. And here we have the body. So what we want to make sure we do here, it's really important, is to make sure that your body that you describe matches or the, the, the names of the fields match what's in that payload that you're going to get. So keep in mind, you know, make sure that the capitalization is correct. So in this case, let's just say we want to look at um, the issue, and then we're going to grab the, the key and, and a couple of fields out of this fields body. So to start with, let's go get um, issue. So I can say that. In my body, I have an issue. And keep in mind that this is where it's really important to match up the name of the field, right? The name field here is what you, what's important that has to match up to the, the field that you have in your payload. And the label here is just what you're gonna end up seeing on the right-hand side uh, that you use later on in your, your flow. So here we have an issue. I'm gonna change the type here to an object because it is an object. And then inside that um, issue object, we have key and we have fields, right? Key is a string, fields is an object. So let's come back here and we're gonna say key and matching my case, that's a string. And then we have my fields. And that's an object. 
So inside my, my fields, now I have a summary, which is a string, right? And, and a lot of other things as well. So you don't have to map every single field that you're gonna get, only the things that you really need to, to use in your, your flow as you go along here. So all this other stuff, users and stuff, I don't, I don't really need right now. So I'm just gonna leave it at that. So I'm just getting uh, from this payload, the key, the fields, a summary, and that's what I'm, I'm pulling, right? And I can also show that, uh, let's just say that we wanna add a, a query parameter or a query parameter is gonna come, come across here. And let's just say we're gonna get the issue ID in the, as a query parameter, that's gonna be a string here as well. Okay, so I'm gonna save that. And we're gonna show just for simplicity's sake, right? I'm not, I'm not trying to build a full integration with, with Jira doing something in service now. I just wanna show that how you can use this REST API trigger, uh, but I'm going to just log the information that's coming in, right? So once you get to this point, you have the information, it shows up in the data pill on the right-hand side. Uh, so you have my issue, I have my key, my fields, and then the summary in there. Any of these things can be dragged and dropped and used in any subsequent action that you might do. So in this case, we're just gonna log, we're gonna say our um, query param ID is this. And then we're gonna say we have the key. And I'm gonna go to the body and grab the, the key from the issue. And then we're gonna grab the summary. Um, the fields, and then just to show that we can just output the whole thing, I can just say we want the body, we can just grab the, uh, the request body. Okay, so I'm gonna save that. And then I'm gonna activate it. So you have to activate it before the external system um, calls that come in are actually gonna be processed by this flow. So now let me create the webhook on the JIRA side that's actually going to send the request. So let me grab my, my instance URL. And right now I have no webhooks, right? This is simply just going to the, uh, the webhooks section in, in JIRA. I'm going to create a webhook. And we're just going to call this the um, REST API trigger. We're gonna put the URL here. Then we're gonna go grab the rest of that body. And then we're gonna add that query parameter. So I believe we called it issue ID, ID equals, oops. and then um, from here I can grab the issue ID or the key, whatever I need to grab and get it. Right. And then when is this going to fire on the Jira side, we're just going to say whenever an issue is updated. All right. So it tells me that these are the fields that are available um, when an issue is updated. So lots of other uh, triggers that can be done on the Jira side to send outbound webhooks. In this case, I'm just going to save this. And we've activated this. So now all I need to do is actually go in here to an actual issue and update it. So we'll save that and come back over here and I'll look at my executions. And you'll see that we've already had a, uh, an inbound JIRA that fired off. I can open that. I can see information about that particular request all the stuff that came in. And then I can look at my log and see that this is the message that should have gone to my log, which has our query param ID, our key, uh, and then the other fields that we actually looked for, right? This is the summary and then the whole body that we actually just dumped out. And in the log, that should also show up here. And there it is. So real quickly, we just showed that uh, we're able to create a REST API trigger for flow that lets an external system like Jira 
invoke a flow in ServiceNow. Now that flow can do anything that you want to do with flow, given the data that comes in from the REST API trigger. So you can do things like uh, update incidents or create projects or update project statuses, or even really cool thing is you can have other integrations, right? So you can have uh, one system come in and um, update a state of something that then triggers something to happen uh, in ServiceNow that invokes an integration to another system and start something there. So you can wire together multiple systems in a way that, that really wires together your business processes and gives you automation. So hopefully that was useful. Um, and thanks for your time. Thanks for watching.